Hello and welcome to episode 3 of the Human Comedy Series. Today we're going to be focusing on the 1 hour endurance race at Autopolis. The car that I used for this race was the Honda S660. And for our upgrades, we purchased the weight reduction stage 1, 2 and 3. Along with the medium RPM turbocharger with the height adjustable sport suspension the sports brake kit and sports clutch and flywheel, the sports intercooler and finally the ballast. These upgrades do put me slightly over the 400 performance point limit so you can see that I'm just adding weight using the ballast to get me under the 400 threshold. For our strategy we're going to be pitting twice. You don't need new tyres but Obviously, fresher tyres will mean you are faster, but as long as you refuel on both, you're fine. As is the case with all of these races, consistency is key, especially with this track with the slower cars. Now for the start of this race, the first few laps, you're going to want to just get used to the car, because the car is a lot slower than other cars you're going to use for these challenges. And it won't be until you are a few laps in that the car will start to really feel like it comes alive. The AI are going to go particularly slowly around the majority of these corners. As you can see, we are at the end of lap two. We are at the back of a train of about six or seven cars. So we're just trying to weave our way through. The AI brake on a lot of the corners where you don't actually need to brake, you can just let off. So we managed to gain a lot of time by doing that. One of the major downsides to this car and this setup is that your top speed is pretty well full. On the main straight, the AI cars will just get away. But when you get your braking points right, you'll be able to gain a lot of time back as you'll be able to carry more speed coming out the corners. With these K cars you really need to avoid braking and steering at the same time otherwise you'll suffer with severe understeer and end up going off track like I did here. This means that all the hard work that we did overtaking the cars in front has just been completely undone. Although one main point is that once you have overtaken the AI it seems that you are able to keep that position and they won't fight you too much for it. So on lap 8 this is where the majority of the front runners will come in for their first pit stop. This puts us second in the race and about 5 seconds behind first place. But by the end of this lap we are in a position to overtake so we are actually in first place. However, we now need to perform our pit stop. As I've never raced this track before with a pit stop, I wasn't aware that the pit entry was cornered, so I ended up smacking into the wall. For our first pit stop, it doesn't really matter if you change tyres or not, I chose not to, but the key takeaway here is to fully refuel. And we'll skip forward a few laps now and we are hunting down the main pack. We've managed to reduce the delta to about three and a half seconds. And we actually get really lucky with an overtake as one of the AI gets caught behind last place who is going extremely slowly. So we're able to pass him on the inside. As I said earlier, the AI will go particularly slowly around these corners, so if you're able to get them right, you can gain a lot of time on them, and this will put you in a good position to perform overtakes. And towards the end of lap 16, this is where the AI will come in for their second pit stop. This will give us some free air and hopefully we can build a bigger gap as possible to the AI behind as we are going to be boxing on the next lap. So for our pit stop, make sure to get the entry to the pit right, just like I did here. Get in, well done me. 
we're going to put on some fresh tyres. Now I'm, I made a huge mistake here and I didn't fully refuel. This meant that I was fuel saving towards the end of the race. So on, on your second pit stop again, make sure to fully refuel. So now I'm just going to run through my fastest lap just to give you a few pointers if you are struggling at all with this track. Well, for our first braking point, we are braking at about 75 meters. We're braking first, going all the way down to third, and then we get on the accelerator, because we don't want to suffer from understeer. For turn two, we're braking just after this gravel road on the left-hand side. This hairpin feels like it goes on for a long time, so you position your car in the middle of the track and then aim towards the inside apex. Well, they sweep in left-hander, we're going to position our car as far right as possible. And then when we turn in, we're going to stick as close as we can to the left-hand side apex. You might need to let off just a little bit, otherwise you will drift wide and end up going off track. Our breaking point for this next left-hand hairpin is going to be this little hut on the right hand side and again we're going quite wide before we turn in to give us the turning angle otherwise we will end up slowing ourselves down our next braking point is about 75 meters and we're going to brake quite hard here stay in fourth gear now the, ne the next two s bends we're going to want to stay in third gear the game is telling us to brake, but we're not going to brake, we're just going to let off because of how slow the vehicle is. And again, for the final corner, we don't actually need to brake, we can just let off. When you feel like your car's got the grip, that's when you can start to accelerate. And there we have it, my fastest lap of a 226.7. It was at this point after I had set my fastest lap that I realised that I was not going to have enough fuel to complete the race. As each lap is about two and a half minutes, we only have enough fuel for three more laps and we actually need enough fuel for four laps. So this is where I start to drastically save fuel. I turn my fuel map up to six and I'm lifting and coasting, but this could have been avoided if I just fully refuelled during my second pit stop. And as we're approaching the line to start our final lap, we have managed to save just enough fuel to finish the race. However, I'm still going to keep it in fuel map 4 as I don't want to risk finishing in second place and this would mean that I've just wasted an hour of my life. And there we have it, after an hour we are coming around the final corner, we are 5 seconds ahead which isn't too bad considering we were fuel saving for about 3 laps and this was a really good one to get out of the way. And of course you know the drill by now, for winning this race you'll get 1.2 million credits. Thank you so much for watching. On the left hand side will be a link to all the Grand Turismo 7 missions and on the right will be a link to the next human comedy mission when it's released.